Social justice is dying. The woke authoritarians are failing because we have real problems to worry about right now, but it doesn't mean they're not trying to survive. Now, this article here, I teach at Oxford, but I don't want it to win the coronavirus vaccine race is actually really, really bad for these woke authoritarian types, because in their desperation to survive, the only outrage they have left is the outrage of success. And this article woman actually argues that she doesn't want the UK to develop a vaccine that will save lives because it will make China look bad. What? I'll tell you what, if social justice was going to die because of the coronavirus, this is going to accelerate it because any sane person is going to say, I don't care who makes it. I'll pay for it to whoever has it. But of course, she says the story will be clear. China once again has unleashed a threat to civilization, but the best brains of the UK have saved the world. Dr. Emily Cousins writes, proving being a doctor doesn't prove you're smart. Huffington Post, she writes for the Huffington Post. In need of a question for your next Zoom pub quiz, here's one. We're getting used to seeing either Boris Johnson, Dominic Robb, Matt Hancock, Robert Jenerek, yeah, 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 a bunch of British people, uh, uh, wheeled out to our screens at 5 p.m. But why is Jenerek the odd one out? The answer, he's the only one that didn't go to Oxford. He went to Cambridge. Oxford, that symbol of British excellence, producing the finest minds in the world. And if this week's news is anything to go by, leading the race to develop a vaccine against coronavirus. Surely I should be proud that the institution I have spent a decade studying and subsequently teaching at could be the first to develop a vaccine. Not only proud, but hopeful and excited. My 72 year old dad is usually a highly social and active man. However, he lives on his own in a very rural village and is becoming increasingly worried that he won't be able to return to his usual ways for years until such a vaccine is developed. So why has my initial relief at hearing Oxford and Imperial are racing away to develop the vaccine followed by worry? Let's suppose that Oxford does develop the first vaccine. What happens next? She goes on to say, well, there could be a production shortage. And, and then this will lead to the rich countries hoarding supplies. We were too late when it came to stockpiling PPE, but we won't be caught out again. The vaccine developed by our finest brains is ours, and it will be Britons who are prioritized for protection. Yes, because you paid for it. What do you think you're going to do? Make the vaccine and then give it to someone else. Apparently, this woman has never been on an airplane because they tell you, make sure to secure the mask of your, your mask before securing the mask of the person sitting next to you. Because if you die, then no one has the vaccine. Could you imagine a single human being saying, Eureka, I have cured cancer. And even though I have it, I'm going to give the cure away. And then in a year he's dead and no one has the cure anymore. If the UK knows how to make a vaccine, by all means, you've earned the priority. Feel free to vaccinate your population and then sell the production and produce in other countries. And I will tell you this. If you invent some machine that saves my life or some product that saves my life, I will gladly pay you for it. Thank you for doing the hard work to allow me to live. But of course, it wouldn't be social justice absurdity if there wasn't also some, I don't know, racism involved. Now, what I, what, I, what I truly love about this social justice narrative is that she is oh so worried about China, which has what? 1.3 billion people to the UK's. What is, what is UK? Like 60 million? I don't know. Maybe even less than that. You're worried about them. You're the minority, dude. <laughs> she doesn't get it. Let's read on. She says, if there is enough vaccine to go around, the UK will be the world savior. We'll quickly forget the devastating delay of the UK government to take action as Boris Johnson proudly safeguarded British institutions like individual liberty and the pub over lies. We'll forget the lessons that the pandemic has taught us so far that the UK and the US are in fact not exceptions at the global stage, that we are not only vulnerable, but we can also afford to learn lessons from countries regardless of whether we have a special relationship with them, such as South Korea that being white, male, and Oxford educated may not be the only criteria for effective leadership. Okay, so hold on. Are you admitting that the white men of Oxford might save the world from this disease, but that's a reason why you don't want them to, so people will learn a lesson about not white males being able to save the world? How does this make sense to these people? They, they, must, they, have, they have a truly a special kind of derangement. The developments made by researchers at Oxford have been enabled by international cooperation 
among the research community. Whilst China has faced lots of questions about its sharing of information politically, according to Laura Spinney, the unprecedented speed of virus development so far is in thanks in large part to early Chinese efforts to sequence, sequence the genetic material of COVID-19. Uh, China shared that sequence in early January, allowing research groups around the world to grow the live virus and study how it invades human cells and makes people sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes on to mention some people say that they've shared this information. China's also lied and tried to slow us down. Stop defending China. What are you doing? She says, this wartime rhetoric is useful in instilling a sense that this is a moment when individuals need to make sacrifices and put country first. But this time, the enemy is not a nation. It's a microbe. So why do our collective solidarities end at the border? The re because we pay taxes and that's our community. We can't pay for literally everyone. The race is on and researchers at Oxford are doing vital life-saving work. Thank you. But races have winners and losers. If my university is the first to develop the vaccine, I am worried that it will be used as it has in the past to fulfill its political patriotic function as proof of British excellence. I'll tell you what, if Britain develops a vaccine that works, it will be proof of British excellence. And I will have no problem saying, thank you, Britain. Excellent work. The story will be clear. China, once again, has unleashed a threat to civilization, but the best brains of the UK have saved the world. Whilst I'm hopeful that I will be able to visit my dad soon, this must not overshadow the key lesson of coronavirus. International cooperation saves lives. The research community knows this. Let's hope our politicians do too. They say Dr. Emily Cousins researches vulnerability and gender. Ah, who saw that one coming? <laughs> at Oxford Brooks University and teaches on the Women's Studies Master Course at University of Oxford. Yes, yes, excellent. I'm going to take the opinion of the Women's Studies and Gender Studies professor over the epidemiologists, virologists who may be making a cure to save the lives of everybody. But I'll tell you what, how about we played the game you played. Remember when they said that if you want to protest that the economy reopen, you got to sign this waiver that says you are waiving all rights to medical treatment if you decide to go out and potentially get sick. Okay, I agree. Then let's present this same waiver to this woman. How about if you want them to not develop this, you sign the waiver saying you will not get the vaccine. There you go. Anybody who wants to have it can have it. And if you don't like it because it's not, it's going to make China look bad or because white men made it by all means then you won't get it. Of course, some people have purported that social justice is dying in the coronavirus era. I am one of them. And I think for the most part it is. As I stated early on, this article is going to wake a lot of people up saying, are you nuts? We're trying to save the world here, dude. I don't care what the person looks like who does it. But of course, there are other people who are bringing up points, making it seem like this is truly ended, but it really hasn't. Barry Weiss from the New York Times writes, the coronavirus makes our old culture wars seem quaint. There are fights worth having. These are some of them. Okay, well, I I, I will apologize first because I'm not going to give her article, I'm not going to do it justice because I'm not going to read through the whole thing. But I want to point out that the general context of it, she, met, she makes mention of, you know, arguing over a ban on plastic straws, whether that was actually a critical step toward ending our reliance on the fossil fuel industry. And it wasn't. And we know it wasn't. But look how insane these people are. They don't stop at straws. They argue that we shouldn't have straws. Okay, well, plastic straws from the US aren't the major contributor to plastic around the world. I am very much an environmentalist. I do not like that Donald Trump has removed a lot of protections for the environment. I'm not a fan of this. But I also recognize China exists. What do we get now when they don't have something nonsensical to be outraged about? They get outraged about legitimate things and cause real problems. Let the Looney Tunes have their plastic straws if it means we can have the vaccine, but they won't stop there. As the world shifts its focus, it's possible we will see the outraged social justice people lose their status and stature because they're nuts and people are scared. It's also possible they use this fear and just shift their focus from plastic straws to the to to international relations and foreign policy. There's nothing racist about Britain developing a vaccine. There is nothing bigoted or bad for the world for them doing this. We share technologies all the time. Yes, I see your argument. You don't want Britain to hoard the vaccine. Well, they deserve money if they develop it. I, I, I absolutely think that's the case. And guess what? We have scientists and researchers, too. We can probably develop our own. So you know what? The more competition, the better. If everyone just sat back and said, eh, don't worry about it. The UK is going to do it. How long would that take? Right now, I believe the number is around 70 different vaccines are, are undergoing development. 
This is great. That's competition. That's how it works. It means we're going to save lives. And if it's a Chinese person who does it, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to scream and say, oh no, how unfair. I don't like the Chinese government, that's for sure. But so long as it's tested and approved and our government, you know, regulates that properly, then fine, so be it. Who cares who makes the vaccine so long as it saves us? There is some concern over trusting China. I'll be fair. You know, if the British develop it, I got no problem. If China develops it, I'm kind of concerned. But but again, it's all about whether or not our government can, can, you know, look through it, make sure it's sound and make sure we're safe because the US wouldn't let us take something. Well, for the most part, they would make sure it's, mostly safe. I'm not saying I'm a big fan of the government or trust them. The point is, it's not about the vaccine. It's about the social justice. It may be going away. This story is really, really bad for them. I think it's gonna make regular people realize they've been nuts the whole time. And maybe Barry Weiss is white, is right. Maybe she's white. No, she's Jewish. Maybe she's right. And we're going to look back at the previous culture war stuff and it's going to be nothing. And maybe that's a good thing. I guess we'll see. I got a couple more segments coming up for you in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.